Hey garden friends, Lane and Gilfillan here at Pepper and Pine Garden Design. And today I wanted to do an update on the Three Sisters Garden, the, all of which I grew from seed inside my house starting in April. I wanted to update you on how it's doing, my thoughts on this particular arrangement of plants and what I think I'll be doing going forward. So if you've seen any of my videos on growing corn, how to grow corn, this playlist right here, um, I grew all these plants, which is in this case, popcorn, uh, all different kinds of butternut squash and pole beans from seed inside my house. I didn't plant any of this directly in the ground except for a very small patch of corn over here that we'll talk about here in a minute. And I have absolutely loved starting all of these things inside, even though really, if you read most you know, things on the, the World Wide Web <laughs> about starting these plants, most are recommended to start directly in the ground. However, here in Southwest Michigan, we have a much shorter growing season, albeit still long. Um, but starting these plants in from seed in my house in April gave them an enormous head start. And it also helped me to really plan when I put these in the ground as plants, as starts, and how their growth has done up to this point. And so that's what I wanna show you here. The corn was the first thing that I put into the ground in groups of four, all in clumps, so that, that as you can see now, the tassels here have come out and the pollen is falling down onto the little corn husks down here, I'll show you in a minute. So there is pollination going on so that we can have nice corn here in the next probably month. And then I planted the butternut squash plants in between the corn, the squares of corn. And then I came in and planted the bean plants. Now I was a little concerned that the corn wouldn't grow fast enough for the beans to grow up because beans grow so fast, but actually the timing has been perfect and the corn actually grew so fast that the beans had plenty of time to grow up the stalks. So everything has grown amazingly. It looks wonderful. I'll be honest, I'm just waiting for the squash bugs to show up and decimate my garden. That's kind of like every gardener's fear, I think, when we grow squash. But right now, everything looks really good from the surface, and I'm just keeping my eyes out for problems. I should mention that today is July 7th. So my sister-in-law has always said knee-high by July 4th is like a good indication of where your corn should be that time of year. Uh, and this is well above that. I am five foot six, and this corn is standing right at eye level. Some of them are a little taller. So... They grew really nicely over the last couple of months, and I can already see a little husks of corn coming up in here. The problem is, which I really think is just the problem no matter how you grow winter squash, is they're just so thick and prolific. Even if I would have spread these plants out eight foot apart, I still would have had a jungle and mass of leaves to wade through to try to find uh, the fruit or to harvest the beans or to what I'm going to do right now is which is why I have my long sleeve shirt on is to go in there and pull out some yellowing leaves that are at the base of the plant that I don't want to succumb to disease. So I'm about to wade through this jungle, which I admit I'm a little nervous about. I have on my big garden boots and long sleeves and pants and I'm going to go in here and pull out a lot of those uh, leaves that are starting to look yellowy and having had brown, brown spots on them. So here's my take on the Three Sisters Garden. This is why I haven't liked it in the past and why I don't think I'm particularly gonna like it this year either. I don't like having to go in here and search for my beans. Um, even if I, if I hadn't put the squash plants at the bottom, I think it would have been more doable to get in here and find the beans. But as it is, I am literally going to have to wade through all these plants to find the beans. And that was my issue with it last time I, that I did this, even though I did it in a different arrangement. Is, I probably will not be doing this in the future just for that reason, because I don't like having to go in and search through this mass, massive jungle for my beans. I find it much easier to grow beans on an arched trellis over here like I have between my two gardens. And that is actually originally how I had planned to grow my beans were on that trellis because they hang down. They're so much easier to harvest and find. Um, and the only reason I switched my plan was because I didn't have a trellis for my cucumbers like I thought I would. So I ended up thinking, well, I'm gonna grow my beans on my corn. That's like a natural trellis right there. And I'm gonna grow my cucumbers on my arch trellises. So that's why I changed my plan, but I'm bummed that I did because I just am not looking forward to harvesting beans and all of this. 
Uh, regardless, everything is doing really well. It looks really healthy. Um, I do feel like my beans could be bigger, but it may just be because they're not getting a lot of light because of all this mass down here. So I'll be curious to get in here in a second to see what I'm seeing, uh, if there's any bean growth down below the surface of this. I wanna take you in here. <laughs> and as I knew, this this is all growing into my um, asparagus bed here, which is fine. This is a, a newly established asparagus bed, so it's not really a big deal that these plants are gonna grow in here. But, you know, Huge squash gardens like this really could just use an entire garden space this big to grow. That's the problem with them is they just take up so much space. Okay, so let's get in here. I'm going to watch where I step. <laughs> so you can see the bean plants here. They look really healthy. I'm not seeing any flowers yet, so I don't think I have any beans. But we've got corn growing in here. Nice healthy stalks. And here's the corn silk that's being pollinated by the tassels. So those are looking really good. These squash plants look great. And I know that the pollinators are getting in here because I can hear them buzzing around in the morning. But I'm starting to see things like this that I want to come in here and pull out. I need to go get my, my scissors. But I want to get these things removed because they will succumb to disease or pests. I'm just going to look and see on these beans in here if there's any sign of flowering and fruit and I don't see any yet. They should be honestly flowering by now, but they're not. Here's some more. This is what I'm going to be doing right now is coming in here and pulling out these yellowing dead leaves and getting them out of here. But this garden looks great. It looks really healthy. It's just sort of a massive jungle that's going to be hard to Manage. All these potatoes are coming out here in the next week. So all of this will be clear for these vines, including my watermelon that I've got growing over here to kind of take over this space as well. Uh, but the problem is, and I kind of knew this might happen, it, it might work out well, but I've got the cut sunflower gardens growing right here. And the really tall stuff that you see right here is the first two rows of sunflowers that I put in. And thankfully, they are well above the squash plants, so they're receiving sun. It's these that don't get sun till the afternoon. So moving forward, if I do this again, I will do what I did with all of my other gardens and have these on an east-west orientation. Because if I do that, having the cut sunflowers planting this back row first, and then planting going this way, going from east to west, this shading problem won't happen. They'll have access to sun from morning till evening. And when I have this succession planting here, the taller plants aren't gonna shade the younger plants. And I kind of knew that going in to this, but in my mind, I knew that I wasn't gonna have a, like a really long row of sunflowers to plant at once. I knew I wanted these kind of smaller collections. So these are just things that you learn as you go as a gardener, like, okay, that wasn't the best plan. Let's change that the next year. So these plants are still growing really well. And by noon, they're gonna have sunshine all the way to like 8.30 at night. That's the nice thing about Michigan is you have these really long days. So they will get plenty of sunshine, but moving forward, I'm gonna continue to have all of my gardens on an east west orientation and not a north south because this is what happens um, whenever you don't have that correct orientation your sh plants that you want to get sun will be shaded so i'll remember that moving forward next year in here to get if you look in there you see all these kind of yellow leaves with spots on it that looks a little bit like a blight um, i just want to come in here and pull those out so that i don't lose these plants to any sort of disease you know, my sunflowers are already starting to take, uh, not a beating, but something's eating their leaves here. So I don't want to have, lose all these plants to disease and pests. So my goal is right now to climb through here very carefully and pull out all these yellowing plants at the bottom. I just did a video this morning talking about the importance of garden maintenance coming out here and taking, this will probably take me 10 or 15 minutes off camera 
to kind of comb through here and pull out all those leaves. And those are the kind of things that you'd want to do on a daily basis. Just notice an area of the garden that needs some attention and give it that attention, whether it's pulling out yellowing leaves at the base of your plants or pulling out some weeds that are impeding the growth of a certain plant or addressing a pest problem. So today, this is what I'm maintaining today is this garden. I've had other areas of the garden that I've done throughout the rest of this week. But today my focus is this squash and three sisters garden, just to make sure that it's staying healthy um, and that we will still get a really good harvest from it here at the end of the season. Okay, so I finished getting out all the yellowing leaves, which were actually on the sunflowers, not the squash. Sunflowers are prone to that kind of blight on their leaves, especially the lower leaves, and you just wanna get those off and get them in the burn pile. Also wash your hands if you've touched plants like potatoes or tomatoes or sunflowers that have that blight on their leaves. You don't wanna touch an unhealthy plant and then touch a healthy plant because you can spread those spores. So I got all that cleared out and taking that to the burn pile. But I wanted to show you one thing that I just noticed before I left the garden. And this is why it's so important to always have your eyes on your garden. Remember me talking about squash bugs? Well, I just noticed this, an adult squash bug. Now he's the only one I've seen, uh, but now that I know he's here, there may be more. So I'm gonna get him, I'm gonna squish him uh, before he lays eggs and I'm gonna just kind of do a quick look over the rest of this garden to make sure there's not any more. Um, but this tells me they're on their way and I need to be having my eyes open. But that right there is an adult squash bug. Now I literally wrapped him up in his <laughs> squash leaf. I pulled the whole leaf off. I squished him, but I'm gonna give him to my chickens just to make sure that he's dead. Um, but yeah, that's how fast it can happen, you guys. I, I haven't seen anything and then boom, they're here. Chick, 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 chick. So you always wanna have your eyes on your garden, uh, looking for, like I said, disease, pest, changes in the way things look. And obviously when it's time to harvest, come here. And she just found the eggs on the back of the leaf, right there. there there's the eggs. Now where'd the- Okay guys, that's gonna wrap up this video. So again, just to, in summary, I love that I started all these plants from seed in my house. I will, <laughs> my hair, <laughs> I will definitely do this next year. What I probably will not do is grow the beans around the corn unless I don't have the squash. If the squash isn't there, it might be more doable to be able to search in there and find those beans. And I may change my mind when they really start coming in, uh, you know, up the higher ends of the stalk and find that they're easy to harvest. But I'm gonna have to wade through all this jungle in here to harvest them. And that's what I'm not looking forward to. So I will probably continue to grow beans on my arch trellises, like I mentioned. But I will definitely be starting this stuff from seed moving forward every year if possible because it's done so well. And I wanted to mention, because I almost forgot, the corn that I planted from seed out here is barely popping through the surface right here. You can barely see some corn popping through the squash here, but honestly, it's probably so shadowed by these huge squash plants, it's not gonna have a chance. So for that reasoning right there, I planted that squash, but um, I'll put the dates of when I planted the corn, um, the transplanted it from the seed inside and then actually planted it in the ground. I'll put those dates below so you can see a comparison, but I would have had to have waited that much longer to start the squash after seeding that corn in the ground because this is what happens. It doesn't get enough sunlight once these squash plants really get going. These had such a good head start that they were able to grow tall enough to get the sunlight above the squash. So that's right there why I really don't want to continue to sow corn directly in the ground if I'm growing it with squash. I just wanted to zoom in. There's a, there's a corn plant there and there's one back there, but that's all I really see coming in. Um, and when I move these leaves around, I, I don't see any, any corn in here. So it probably just didn't make it. So yeah, two, two plants from the plants that I planted by seed. So I would just really have to change my transplanting dates to be able to do that. So this corn patch will be a loss and that's okay. I knew that might happen. Uh, we still have this to harvest from for the year. So kind of a disappointment, you know, cause I meant that whole patch of corn we won't be harvesting from, uh, but lesson learned. And that's why I did this. I really wanted to know what was the best plan moving forward. So I hope that this information has been helpful to you. Uh, if it has, consider subscribing or sharing this video with someone that you think it might be helpful to. And as always, my name is Landon Gelfillan here at Pepper and Pine Garden Design, growing gardeners and their gardens. And I'll see you in the next video.